What's up everybody? It's Mr. and Mrs. Bradley coming to you guys with a new series we're starting today called Dear Mr. and Mrs. Bradley. So in this series, we're just gonna tackle a few things that come up day to day that we wanted to just sit down in a conversation for them to tackle just day to day things that come up in marriage, life in general. Yeah, this is going to be our raw and unedited thoughts. So we're gonna have raw, unedited conversation. You guys can also submit topics and email, DM us, whatever you want. And we'll definitely add it into whatever we're talking about. But we're so excited about this series. You guys are always asking us questions and in no way are we experts or saying that we are the end all be all in relationships. But we just want to talk about some of the things that have happened to us and some of the things that we've learned going through our almost eight years of marriage now. Yep. Eight years of marriage, 12 years together. Um, just things that we, we kind of our conversations that we have that we don't film. We want to put that stuff on camera and stuff that we talk about when, from car rides home from work um, to sitting in the, having dinner at, dinner at the kitchen table or in our bedroom. So uh, before we get into it too deep, guys, don't forget to like this video. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And don't forget to share this content, all right? So today's topic, we're going for the kind of give an introduction. A lot of people have seen us do this. We kind of did a video like this on CC's other channel. That was like bit. four years ago. Yeah. like. <laughs> So uh, a lot of people, we get a lot of questions about our background and things of that nature. So how did we meet, CC? We met at a nightclub. So this is what happened. <laughs> this, was, this is her point of view of how it happened. Whatever. I was supposed to go out with my friends that day. Um, my friend was like, oh, it's this party. Did you have a party at this one club? Me and a couple of my friends go to the club. The club was so dead. It was terrible. We were also really early, too. I don't know. I was 21. We were super early. And um, so then I was like, hey, I used to know this guy, and he used to always go to this other club. I have no idea where this club is. And all I know is it's in a certain area. I was like, I was like, it's in the flats, which is this area in Cleveland. And I was like, I don't know exactly where this club is. I don't know, like, I didn't know anything about it. I just knew the name of it. I didn't even know if the club still existed because the dude told me about it maybe a year before. So, <laughs> so we find the club, get into the club. We're super early. No one's really there. And um, we're just like standing on this like balcony. And there's this guy who keeps staring at me oh from below. Yes, you were. There's this guy who just keeps staring at me from below. And I'm telling my friends, I'm like, oh my God, he just keeps staring. He don't come talk or what? Like, stop staring at me. Oh, so you weird. This is weird. No, I thought you were weird. <laughs> and so he finally comes up and talks to me. And um, I just want to point out that you can't notice someone staring at you if you're not looking back at them. No. I just want to point that out. I was on the balcony and okay. I was looking down because that's where you look when you, you don't have to look down right at one person. You don't, but that's what I was. I mean, I was just looking down. Okay. So I saw him, like I said, I was like, is he going to come over or what? He finally came over and um, talked to me. Obviously, asked me for my phone number. We kind of talked about where we lived, uh, and it was ironically around the corner from each other, which is really crazy. Like was in walking distance around the corner. So she, she ain't, she ain't, she ain't really marinating on my game. She like ain't really putting the sauce out there on how the, the swag was able to, to get her. For one, I was not staring up at her, yeah, but yeah. I was when you were in the nightclub you, and anybody. My fellows can attest it. When you're in a nightclub and you know that somebody, especially like you said, it wasn't like dumb early, but it was early enough where there was not a lot of people in there. So you know when you're in a bar or a night scene area, you look in, you catch eyes with somebody, you catch their eyes, they catch your eyes, y'all look. May I then maybe I may I did I look maybe one too many times? Maybe. But I did get up and walk away. I bought a drink, came back, and that's when I approached her. To talk to her. You ain't buy me no drink. I did not buy you a drink. I don't know. Which. <laughs> Came back to talk to her. Um, I didn't just say, 
Oh, let me get your number. See, hey, we sparked up a conversation, light conversation. Hey, let me see your phone. Proceeded to call my phone to get her number locked into my phone and lock my number into her phone. Um, at that point, what she said, I did. The dark corny line was when we was our conversation and knowing where each other lived. Found out she lived up the street. I'm like, oh, I can walk to your house. Not actually walk because I had a car at this time. I was just making conversation on how close we actually live to one another. Um, and that's when she proceeded to tell me that she had to work the next day and I could not walk her house, which was a lie. Cause I know him. <laughs> I know him. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I told her, I was like, I gotta work tonight. I gotta work tomorrow, sorry. Um, but either way, we ended up texting. I guess, what's your version? Let's that, go there. That is, that's, that, that's pretty much it. I would say that's comparable. Like I always say, she has this grand, this grand illusion. Like I was just staring at her and like she just was, I did, I was looking, I was, I was attracted to her, I did, was looking at her. But she had, I could keep saying, in order for her to know I was looking at her, she had to be looking at me. Untrue. It's not untrue. It is untrue. Anyway, how many numbers, how many times did you show up? How many times did you get out your phone number? It was just you. So. And I had lots of people asking. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically the story on how we met. And then I will say the next day, the, I guess the, the, I don't know how to wrap up the, our meeting was actually, I called her, I texted her actually, and we were texting back and forth for a second. Um, and then she called me when, when she proceeded to call me Marquise on my voicemail. Um, when I got off of work. Yeah, and she quote unquote got off of work because she wanted to uh, to hang out. And I was like, oh cool. So we actually end up talking. She ended up meeting me at my house. Actually, story I found out later is she actually blew off a party that she was supposed to go to and we talked outside of my house for like five hours. It was a long time. We were just like standing outside having a conversation pretty much about everything. Um, found out we went to the same high school, uh, just four years apart, so it's like he graduated in May and then I got there in August. So we were like super close to each other but just missed each other. And so, um, I mean, we just had so much in common, so it was it was just such a, it was a good conversation. And honestly, the rest of the history, we went on a date six days later. Six days later. So that next Saturday and then the rest is history. Oh, let me tell you, so. I went to find she was working part of this like part-time job at rallies and I called myself. I, was, I knew she was at work and I was like, I'm gonna go up here just to see her. And I ordered order the food and she like dogs me out no. on, the, on the order machine. And then I come to find out I just thought she talked to all her customers. <laughs> I was a terrible employee. I worked at rallies for like five years throughout high school and college, and I was like the worst employee ever. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> so anyway, um, we ended up, we basically were inseparable besides some ups and downs. For the most part though, we were inseparable for the next 12 years. Fast forward 12 years from now, here we are, and this is where we are. So let me ask you this. Obviously we dated for four years live with each other for three to four years long, basically, before we decided to um, get married. Okay. Would you change anything about those four years before we got married? See, that's a hard question because I don't feel like, I feel like if you change something, that changes everything. So I always say if something, I don't know, I, I take things, like I take everything as a lesson. So obviously we had some issues um, sprinkled into there, but would I change anything? I don't. I don't think I would. I think the way we met was like pure fate, and we've talked about that. Like I literally was not supposed to be at that club that night. I was supposed to be at a totally different club, and just by chance remembered some guy telling me about this other spot. A year prior, you know what I'm saying? And clubs, like especially in our city, I don't know if it's like that in every city, but clubs change names yeah, so much. much, and they close and they re like. So that club might not have even been there, and so I just feel like 
the way we met was fate and everything that came after I mean it was work <laughs> but um, we got to a really good place and are still here so. yeah I mean I definitely feel like we met by say I wasn't supposed to be at that nightclub either I we had hit a couple bars before we actually ended up there and just the night scene was so bad that night that we just was like that club so happens to stay open. That's like the latest club in the city. Say it almost like 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the morning. So we just decided we're just gonna post up there and wait until I actually start jumping. So I wasn't supposed to be there that early either. So um, I truly I, believe we would've got there later. Either one of us, we probably wouldn't have seen each other or whatever. We, the club was just so empty. Like it, there were only a few people in there. So I'll say this. So let me ask you this. Um, I think dating in the beginning is very, very big, and I feel like transparency is very big. Now, there's a question, I'm going to ask this question, I joke, we joke all the time about this, but it's, just, it's serious. So, there's a question you asked me, probably our second, I think it was probably our first time on the phone, because it so happened that you was, she quote unquote wasn't looking at me, but she so happened to see me oh, get, <laughs> happened to see me get a few phone numbers that night and she asked me point blank on the phone like how many numbers did you get that night and i told you zero i would have knew you was a liar off the job <laughs> like i saw him i think i saw him get like two other girls i just and i wasn't like looking for him it was just that i would look over and he'd be like there getting somebody else's phone number to be honest i was not even planning on like calling him or anything like that and he had my phone number like that, i'm yeah. just saying i wasn't <laughs> i'm like if he you know i'm sending me texts okay but i wasn't really planning on calling me and he called me that night oh what you said was gonna ask me i definitely phone. was not i was a pocket dial you could even hear the club in the well, back of you said i mean i don't i didn't hear i don't know he called me while we were in the club and i'm like oh my god this is that guy who <laughs> just took my phone number so like i wasn't like honestly i wasn't planning on like obviously getting here so it's just, um, yeah. So would you? So you wouldn't have dated me if I said I got no phone. No, because you'd have been a liar. If you lie about something, if, I just feel like if you lie about something like that and you don't even know me, like first of all, if I get mad about something like that, I'm probably a crazy person that you want to stay away from. <laughs> so if you would lie about something like that and you don't even know me, you're probably a liar, and I should stay away from you. I think that's big. I really do think that's big because I that was probably the biggest thing I was thinking is like, why lie? Like, no, yeah. I wasn't. No, you wasn't the only person I was checking out that night. You were the person that caught my attention the most because you was, wasn't the only person I texted that day, but the only person I had a five-hour conversation with the next day. I was the person down enough to respond. Is that what you're saying? No, everybody <laughs> responded. I was the only one that responded. <laughs> everybody responded. <laughs> But you then the person I ended up having a four or five hour conversation with outside of our house the next day. So So once we got into um, actually into a relationship, well first I would say it kind of started off as just like um what? What would you say? Like hang out with friends with benefits. Yeah, I mean. It kind of started off there. Um, but it was like but it was it was different. It wasn't just like it was different. Yeah. Like, it was like, we hadn't established anything, but it was like I feel like in our minds, we kind of did. Like, it was like, yeah. It was like inseparable. We were like, I remember even talking about her going back to school and making, we was already making plans on like, how I'm going to see her when she get back to school. And yeah, because we met like three weeks before I had to go back to college. And I only went to college two hours away, so it wasn't far. But I mean, obviously, you wouldn't be able to see each other every day since we're two hours away. And we was like around each other all the time, like every day. We was going, even I was if calling it was, off work, yeah, it was being like, late. I was like two, two hours late to work. <laughs> like yeah, like going to um, grab ice cream, watching movies, just like literally, we were literally inseparable from the day we met. We pretty much did not. I don't think we went a day without seeing each other the first. After that, that first, first day, that first day, yeah. So we, um, the things were things were good. And finally, after like a month, we ended up like making it official and getting together. And um, we had a really great what nine months, yeah. eight months, 
<laughs> Something like that. And then we hit some rough patches. I think we talked about this in our um, previous relationship video. Like, I feel like that first six to eight months is that that period where your 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 like your representative is there, <laughs> and you're not you're not the exact person that you are. And it's not that you're trying to deceive anyone. It's just that that's human nature. You want to put be your best self with new people. Yeah. And that's just how it is. And so I feel like after that like first seven to eight months, we started to hit rough patches. School ended and I got back home and I feel like that's kind of where the problem started. Like we had learned how to be apart, but now we were trying to learn how to be together. All the time. And all the time, yeah. And while I had, a, I you know got out of school, so I had a full-time job and things were just different. Like I didn't have a job when I was in school. I had a lot of free time. Yeah, I remember a phrase you used to use all the time, which I didn't really didn't really resonate with me. Even I would even say within our first like few years of marriage, it was like, well, you can't compare that person, that me, to this person because that was a completely different me, and that was only like it was always like give me because I was only like nine months ago, and that it really never it didn't really hit. I can say honestly until like. I don't want to say probably like, might even been like when we got married, because I remember talking about like, man, all I want to do is get back to when we first started dating. All I want to get back into the vibe to when we first started dating. I think that was the problem with meeting in college. Like college is like this environment for, at least for me, college was this environment where I was an adult, but I didn't have any adult responsibilities. Like my parents still took care of my bills. I didn't have to, you know, I didn't have to think about the adult stuff while still being able to go out, have fun, and do what I wanted to do. So that was kind of college. College was that like perfect balance right there. So, you know, I could still, again, I could still be carefree with you. I could, we could still go out, hang out all night, then come back and, and I don't have anything to do tomorrow. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's how college was and it was amazing. And so for our relationship, it was like everything was light, carefree, fun. Then I get home, all of a sudden I have this full-time job. I had bills. I moved out of my, my parents' house within about, what, four months, three months. And so things like kind of like moved pretty fast. I went from being this carefree person to this adult real adult. quick. And I, mean, I think that's like really big too because now, hell, this just hit me just now. Like a part of you or your college experience in the, like obviously was a part of me, but that was like my escape to an extent because I was, I was already an adult. Yeah. I, was, I had a job that I worked every day that I went to, a night job at that, that I went to. And so when I was going to see you, that was basically my vacation. my vacation, right? I was escaping life and I had a son at that point. Um, my issues were going on with his brother and whatnot. And so it was like, all right, well I get this escape and now I was like, that escape is taken away. Not only is that escape taken away, but my the girl that I was getting with that escape is, is different now. Yeah, so I think that's where a lot of our problems started um, at that stage. And those problems probably lasted for about a year. It took us a good solid year. I mean, I think at one point in time, both of us had one foot out the door. Hey, we were done. Like we were like, like this is just not working. And it took us about a year to really. I think we sat down and had like one conversation. We we're like, look, are we gonna do this or not? Like, what are what are we doing here? Like, and and we both decided that we wanted to stay in it and stick it out, and we did. We got engaged or well, we moved in together. Which is crazy. I probably would not recommend the way in which we decided to move in together to anybody. We it was like uh it was kinda we we decided to move in together kind of on a, like a strength of like, all right, we're gonna make this work. And how we're gonna make this work is by living <laughs> living together. <laughs> so um it was kinda and it was it was again, you wanna talk about faith. Another faith thing is she had a roommate, Her she was supposed to be moving and her roommate kind of bailed on her. And I was in a situation where my roommate was sick and I was losing half of his money. So it was kind of like, uh, we both trying to figure out if we're going to do this. And we both kind of need each other at this point because both of our roommates kind of just bailed on us. What the hell? <laughs> That's just the movie together. So, um, yeah, so that first year we lived together, how would you describe that? I think 
trying to after living on your own like living by yourself and then coming into a situation with another person even though you like spend the night over their house all the time or with them all the time living with them is just a totally different thing and so i mean that was another point where we had to figure out i think once we moved in together too it was like two things we had to figure out how to live together but then we also were trying to figure out our future and that's when we really started getting serious and talk about marriage and what we're going to do next and and we were also broke at the broke. time too well, i was broker than her and i was <laughs> i was broker than her and so we were like fighting about whose turn it was to like buy season and so on shit like, <laughs> <laughs> like the, the money didn't help either so there were a lot of factors coming at us that first that first year we moved in together and honestly money problems continued for a few more years until we were able to really be stable and get on our feet so i mean i think the first year was as good as it could have been with everything we had going on okay so um talking about the future uh obviously a lot of people don't know this but me and cc were engaged before she even got an engagement ring <laughs> so um Looking back on that, do you wish you would have got like the one knee on down on one knee type of proposal type of deal or? But you always picture getting the one knee, down on one knee, I don't know, a bunch of flowers, family there surprising me, I don't know. That's how I always pictured it. Didn't happen that way. <laughs> but um, like you said, we were kind of already, we were not kind of, we were already engaged. By the time I ended up getting my engagement ring, we had already put a down payment on our, <laughs> our reception home. Well, my parents had put a down payment on our reception home. I was broke. What do you want me to say? <laughs> I was, um, I care more, which is a big deal I think about um, when we talk about rings and all this stuff. I did make sure to get the ring cares that she asked for um but i was broke but i was committed to our future um so much so that we actually ended up moving our wedding up so we were supposed to get married like two years out we actually ended up bringing it in we like put together a wedding in like was it nine months ten months something like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep it wasn't a, um it was about a, it, was, it was like right under a year hmm. that we did it and so I mean, I, I don't know. The rest is the rest is history. So from the time we met to marriage, it was about exactly four, four years. years. Pretty much exactly four years. And so I thought that was an, a pretty good timeline considering our age as well. I mean, I was 21 when we met. I wasn't getting married to nobody at 21 or 22. So considering our age, I thought four years was a good timeline. I know some people may think that's too long. Hell, some people may think that's too short, but <laughs> that works for that worked for us. So long story short, that's how we got to being married. Um, we it wasn't it wasn't some fairy tale that we like met and fell in love and just couldn't be without each other and everything was perfect and these videos that everybody just see and they talk about how all oh, you guys are goals and that's dope. We appreciate that stuff, but it it's that is just how we got to being married. That ain't even addressing how we got from being that first day, September 29th, 2012, to now. Like, this thing has been work. Um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, I wouldn't trade her for the world. But we wanted to just do this first episode to kind of just kind of give our backstory, a little bit of, a little bit of a backstory about us. We get those kind of questions um, all the time, like how'd you guys meet, where'd you guys meet, things like that. So love in the club. <laughs> yeah, we. That's a one of her friend. One of her friends actually said that it was like the first year joked about, and it's so for that song had just came out by Usher, like. I want to say like either before, right before or a little bit after we started dating. Everybody was like, you guys like the only first people I ever met who actually turned meeting in the club to marriage. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I'm captivating. Or I'm captivating. You are. <laughs> <laughs> So let's go ahead and out and close out this first episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any topics, like I already said, make sure you leave them down below in the description box. Or again, you can 
email us or DM us. Y'all know how to get in touch with us. So just go ahead and do that. And um, we'll definitely try to address them in a future video. Yeah, this next one we're going to do um, following this one. Which we're going to start diving, deep diving into some deeper conversation about things. Um, some topics that we've gotten, some questions that we've gotten in the past that we felt needed some address. We're going to wrap up this video today, guys. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you know when we drop a new video for this series. You don't want to miss it. Until next time, it's Mr. and Mrs. Bradley checking out. Peace.